Okay, to understand the pathophysiology of pneumonia, I'm going to talk really briefly about uh, how normal physiology of uh, gas exchange takes place within the alveolus. So the alveolus is the um, terminal unit of the lung tissue. So you have um, the airways, the trachea, the bronchial, uh, uh, bronchi, bronchioles, and all of those are considered dead space. There is no gas exchange at all taking place in those areas. Their only job is to um, is to move the air from the atmosphere down into the portion of the lungs called the alveol alveoli. Alveoli are little sac-like uh, units like this. They're kind of clustered like grapes at the end of the airways. There are hundreds of millions of them that make up your lungs, and this is where gas exchange takes place. So really quickly, let's just talk about how that works. So the air comes down, you breathe it in through your airways, ends up in your alveoli, down here in your alveoli. Your gas is really, really close to these pulmonary capillaries. Pulmonary capillaries run like a little mesh network across and around these alveoli. And the, the, really, the um, very close proximity of the alveoli and the cap pulmonary capillaries, see this is this tiny, tiny, tiny little a microscopic gap between them allows diffusion of gases to take place. So the blood in your pulmonary capillary is coming from your body. So this has been used by cellular uh, metabolism. This blood has gone back to your lungs to get uh, refilled with oxygen and to dump off that CO2. So it has, we'll say, high CO2, low O2. And it comes here, up right close to your alveoli. The air that you breathed in, on the other hand, has high O2 and low CO2. So do just a basic diffusion. It runs from a, a gradient of high concentration to low concentration, so that the concentration equals out. So oxygen diffuses this direction into your blood. And CO2, let's just pick a different color for CO2 comes here from high concentration to lower concentration into your alveoli. You then breathe out. When you breathe out, you take the CO2 out the way the air came in, and the blood that is now marching on down to your left side of your heart, where it can be sent out to your cells, is comparatively higher in O2 than it was, and lower in CO2 than it was at this point. Now, what happens in pneumonia to disturb this normal uh, physiology of lung function. Well, what happens is, first of all, you have some type of invading organism. Now, this can be bacteria, it can be fungus, a fungi, it can be a uh, virus. So it somehow gets here into the alveoli. It can, you can breathe it in, which is the, uh, this is the most common. It can actually diffuse, come through the, pap uh, not diffuse, but come through the bloodstream uh, this way in. You know, there's lots of different ways that it can get into your alveoli. But the point is, it gets in. Then you have an immune response. The first portion of your immune response, you're going to have the uh, white blood cells migrating from the bloodstream into here. Okay? These white blood cells attack this foreign invader. Now, one of the side effects of your immune response is that it creates gaps in the membranes. So little gaps here, and especially gaps here. Now these gaps are an adaptive mechanism that are supposed to allow more white blood cells uh, to get to the site, site, uh, site of the infection. But in this case, not only does it allow more white blood cells in, it also allows serous fluid, such as fluids, red, some red blood cells, you have some of those maybe leak out and get in here, and let's see, lots and lots of more white blood cells. Then you have other inflammatory mediators, cytokines, these little um, signaling and attack chemicals that are all part of your uh, immune and inflammatory response. So this organism, let's say it somehow manages to keep growing. You have the same situation happening in some portion of the hundreds of thousands of alveoli in your body. Now the problem is, you know, these t the organisms start to die off, some of the white blood cells start to die, more fluid creeps in, and you end up with this layer in your alveoli. And in the single alveolus, you can see what happens. So now, now when you breathe the air in, 
the gap between the uh, alveolus and the pulmonary capillary is no longer this wide, it's this wide. And diffusion takes is a passive uh, process. It only works because of a small, uh, narrow gap between the two areas. So now your oxygen is no longer able to diffuse across. You just kind of back here, right? You breathe it back out. And this alveolus has basically now become dead space, like the airway above it. And on the other hand, your CO2 you know, wants to diffuse out, but it can't. So CO2 continues down. And you end up in a situation where you have on the same blood here that was uh, low in O2 and high in CO2 is unable to have any gas exchange at this uh, alveolus, alveolus capillary, uh, pulmonary capillary junction. And you end up with the same situation at the other end that travels to the left heart and out to the body. So if this was only happening maybe in you know, a handful of alveoli, it wouldn't be a big deal. The problem is this is happening in a significant portion in a, um, in a serious pneumonia, a significant portion of the body's alveoli. And so overall, you get this um, generalized effect that the blood returning to the left heart uh, contains a lower level of oxygen and a higher level of CO2 than um, it would when the lungs are healthy. This is hypoxia and hypercarbia. So what are some of the complications that uh, patients can experience when they have a pneumonia? Well, left untreated pneumonia can lead to sepsis, which is a kind of more widely disseminated uh, infection and inflammatory response within the body. Sepsis leads to hypotensive shock, which if untreated will lead, to, will lead to the patient dying. Another complication is ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome. Also, you can have uh, just general respiratory failure requiring mechanical ventilation. Uh, requiring intubation and ventilation. And you can have necrosis of the lung tissue. So parts of the lung tissue can actually die off. Oh, well. And this will have to be uh, surgically removed if the patient is going to recover. And finally, you just have, you can have generalized um, multi-organ failure from any of these above complications. So if the patient isn't septic, um, it might be the respiratory failure. If you're unable to um, oxygenate and ventilate the patient, their, their oxygen levels will drop too low and their CO2 levels in the blood will rate, rise too high. These will create conditions that are no longer uh, compatible with life. Metabol normal cellular metabolism isn't able to go on without oxygen and with a buildup of too much CO2. So as you can see, these are some very serious complications related to pneumonia. Um, and that's why that it's you know, one of the most common causes of uh, death from infection in the United States.